This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, sure. Do it again, Bennett. we're playing this theme all over again is because daddy fucked up yes i uh, i ruined the whole beginning of the show so i figured i'd uh, uh we have to do a clean recording of this thing okay uh so those people who uh, didn't hear larry bubbles brown didn't hear larry bubbles brown okay all right okay so uh, we're, uh, <laughs> and that was the first part of the show. So the rest of you are just going to get the uh, citizen panel part of the show, okay? Unless I fix this tomorrow, which I don't know if I want to do that. Anyway, I think it's kind of time for me to get all these people admitted into our, uh, uh, into our, uh, uh, let me see here. Our, uh, yeah, there they come. Here they come. And uh, you know who we have? Who, uh, we have, of course, Jeff, and we have Alan, and we have Charlie, but we also have an old friend uh, from uh, Australia, ladies and gentlemen, Ross Manuel. Uh, who you? What, what was the name you used to go by? Doc. Doc. Okay. So to some of you, he's Doc. Uh, I always kind of remember he's Ross Manuel, oddly enough, because you always used to write me under that name and so on. But anyway, yeah. Ross is in uh, in Australia right now, and uh, last night I didn't do a show, but I did answer a few callers that were coming in uh, to the show because I wanted to inform them that we weren't doing a show. See how wonderful I am, that sort of thing. <laughs> and Doc and I were talking about last night um, the way Australia is handling this. You say you're finally closing down is what's happening? Um well, we're closing down again. So when it all started last year, the federal government decided that they were going to shut the whole country down. Basically, we, we followed New Zealand. We did the you know, non-essential work. You couldn't travel. Yeah. Uh, the, our borders closed. Yeah. So we, for about 100 days, we had, that's it. And we did okay. And unfortunately, that success has been our undoing. I see. Well, because you see, you've got a, a unique position. You're an island. And so yes. you can just say, okay, we don't want anybody in here who might give us COVID. And you can kind of isolate yourself from the rest of the world until the crisis has passed, right? Essentially, yes. Yeah. So, but what it, all that also did is allowed us to build up our inf medical infrastructure because we never had, you know, Ebola or Zika or <sighs> uh, SARS or MERS or swine flu or bird flu. We didn't have any of those because of our biosecurity laws. And we basically treated our uh, the pandemic the same way we treat our border security, is mm -hmm. that if you're not welcome, you can't come here. Yeah. Now, right uh, now, yeah. Uh, uh, so right now, don't you work in a hospital, if I remember correctly? No, I work in a museum. In a museum. Well, same thing. My wife works in a hospital. It's a, it's a, it's a place for sick dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, for instance, it, you're in what part of Australia? So I'm in southern New South Wales. So yeah. I'm yeah. about two hours south of Sydney, which is currently in lockdown, mm -hmm. and an hour north of the capital. Okay. Very much like a Washington, D.C. kind of situation. So how bad is it up there? I mean, for instance, how many people are dying? How many people have got it? Do you know? Uh, the total number who are, who are dying, we have not had a single COVID death in six months and you guys are going into lockdown yep okay. because we had 83 confirmed cases in uh sydney of the um delta strain oh so okay all right our all right. total deaths is 910 deaths and thirty thousand cases okay how many deaths have we had in this country uh, charlie keeps the stats for us how many people are dead in the united states Six hundred and three thousand five hundred and twenty-three. So don't complain. 
<laughs> what you guys also have is an actual vaccine rollout. Yes, yes. Which you don't have, which you said you had, but you had the AstraZeneca. Yeah, and so it was... because of because we don't have a lot of the manufacturing, <clears> so <throat> we couldn't produce the Pfizer or the Moderna uh, or any of the, the RNA-based viruses, and we had supply issues coming in because yeah. of Europe. Uh, we banked very heavily on AstraZeneca, something that we could produce locally. The yeah. data has come out. That's basically meant that we're phasing AstraZeneca out as of October because it's no longer considered viable uh, or safe to anyone under the age of like 60. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Yes. You guys I, I, haven't even approved yet. Alan has a question. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, a friend of mine's a uh, ER doc in Brisbane, Australia. Mm -hmm. up, up north from you there. And uh, he said that they're just now got approval for Moderna and yep. told me they're going into lockdown. The whole, I don't know what you call it, the eastern or western side of Australia, eastern side is going into lockdown right now. Again, yeah, so. Again, and because they are, the rollout that they even had with the AZ, with the AstraZeneca was horrible. It, it comes down to, um, <clears throat> we banked on our distance as our defense mm -hmm. so you couldn't come into the australia so therefore you didn't we didn't need to worry about how to deal with people when they came to australia but because everything's loosening up we've now got all these cases of hotel quarantine so basically you have to quarantine in a hotel at your expense 14 days before you come here unfortunately hotels aren't quarantine facilities so they're not designed for um you know isolating people so, and the government's like, well, hotel quarantine works. It did initially with the earlier strains. Mm -hmm. With Delta, because the way it, way it spreads, it doesn't work, which is why it keeps getting out into the community. Those and because the of that, system. yeah. And because right. of that, now that we're now moving to a to dedicated quarantine facilities, basically what we did at the beginning, because mm -hmm. Australia has offshore processing of our, all our illegal immigrants, oh. um, the joys of having islands that surround us that we own um, we're going back to that approach as opposed to hotel based, which will take some time. So you're, using them, of that, you're using them for quarantine rather than uh, um, uh, prison islands. Uh, effectively, yeah. Weren't they used as prison islands in the old days? Um, not so much prison islands. Basically, any if, if, if our Navy picked up any people smuggler boats or people trying to come to Australia illegally because mm -hmm. we have a very short ocean gap between us and indonesia uh and new guinea you would be taken to one of the six islands that surround us that australia has territorial domain over mm -hmm. and you'd be processed your your asylum application would be processed there i never Very heard the i never i never heard of any of those islands can you name them uh there's nauru there's christmas island uh-huh there is ugh, they're the two main ones uh-huh and then we have, we have like there's like Norfolk Island, Fraser Island. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So they, they got populations of like 110 people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. But we're very much like the United States. We don't have. Well, if we they have got the, a population of 110 people, and you're going to send a bunch of possible COVID people to those islands, they're not going to be too happy. Which is why we're adopting to co-opting co military bases. Oh, so okay. we've got a lot of military bases that we're going to convert into quarantine facilities. Yeah, but uh, you, you don't have quite the problem that you you would have had you were you not so safe about it. Okay. Yes. I mean, you're really taking you're being proactive is what it's all about. You know. Yes, like our government was criticized. We were one of the first countries to close our border to China. We were the first country, one of the first countries to close our borders to Europe, to the United States. Mm -hmm. People are like, well, are you going to destroy the economy? And it's like, yes, but we've only had 30,000 cases and 910 deaths. Yeah. And I have never been in lockdown. I've ne I only wear a mask at work because I work at a museum, but I've never had any of the problems. I don't know a single person who has had COVID uh, where I live has had been gone 329 days without a single, co a single COVID case. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's without being vaccinated. I would yeah. bet six months ago you wouldn't be saying that if you lived in Melbourne, Australia. No, that's difference. That is different. Yeah. Yes, I, 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 I live in Canberra, so right. uh, right. yeah. the capital has had zero cases the entire length of the pandemic. Yeah. 
Well, it's good to see you again, Ross. I mean, this is wonderful. I, I think this is a wonderful thing about the internet is that yeah. we can be doing a show here and you can be in Australia. And you look, oh, yeah. you look just as good, good as anybody else and it's just as clear, you know. <laughs> And uh, in the old days, we used to use Skype, which wasn't as good. This is really clean, and everybody looks terrific. Oh, yeah. Hi, how you doing, Kevin? Hey, Alex. How you doing? Good. And how you doing, Josh? Good. How are you? There we go. And uh, Charlie Wallace, how are you uh, doing these days? On uh, pins and needles. Pins and needles? Yeah, Longhorns are playing Mississippi State in the College World Series, and uh, it's five to two going into the ninth inning. Oh, really? Oh, okay. All right. You, can, you I, might as well turn the TV off, Charlie. Texas is going to lose. <laughs> we'll see. Did you say that just because of what he's wearing on his chest? <laughs> no, not me. I would never be sarcastic. You would never be sarcastic. <clears throat> Hello, Jeff. How are you doing? I went to Australia for... About a month. Really? Yeah. Oh. How and, was uh, it? Was it a nice vacation? Or? It, was, it was not a vacation. It was work. It was work. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh, did you and, have any... But I did take a, like a week where I went to one of these little islands, and there was only four people on the island. On the whole island? And we were two of them. <laughs> you were two of them. I was one of them. <laughs> well, wait a minute. If you go to an island, it's only got two other people there. I mean, it's not like they've got. They, did you have a place to stay? <laughs> we brought uh, like tent equipment. You brought tent equipment. How long ago was that? Because oh, I can't ago. imagine you camping at your age. Well, I at this age, age I mean, forty years ago. Well, wait a minute! I can't hmm. imagine camping at my age. I went to Machu Picchu too in Peru. You know, when you get to be our my age, you know, you want a toilet that works. Okay? Yeah. You know, I mean, running water, an air conditioner. Yeah, and uh, you know, and uh, maybe takeout food. You know, so I mean, it's it's just uh, it's a whole whole deal. But anyway, so you were there when? How long ago? I think it was forty years ago. Oh, okay. So, you know, Australia is really beautiful. It is. It was a very nice country. Was, nice any, country. was anybody here saying it wasn't beautiful? No, I, I, I'm going to make a point here. They have the 10 most deadly spiders, the 10 most deadly yeah. snakes, and the 10 most deadly sea creatures of anywhere in the world. Someplace that beautiful was such a deadly... I mean, right. in Sydney, they have this little spider that's a, a bite is as deadly as... It, it goes for first runner-up in the world, uh, along with the Brazilian wandering spider. Is he is he telling us the truth here, Ross? Is, is he accurate? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's called the funnel web, Sydney funnel web, and it's oh, yeah. only within Sid Sydney and and around that area. For oh some great! Reason, it oh work. great! You, you move <clears throat> to the big capital of Australia, and you've got the world's worst spider. That's terrific. Sydney oh. funnel web. Sydney also has a lot of bushland, so the funnel webs. What uh, there's a common misconception that I love I love to debunk is that I, I go outside and I go attack my spiders. I have to go several miles into bump fuck nowhere to get into encounter these spiders. Oh, okay. <laughs> like right, the city you, you know what's interesting is that in the in, in the United States we have a city called Bum Fuck Two. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> it's a universal town. It's a universal you know, they, town. they recently changed it to New York City. <laughs> We've got some what of you, the most. What are, you, what are you saying? Are you are you dissing my city? No, I love New York City actually. Yeah, yeah. Better lives it, matter. The United, United States has some of the most deadly people in almost every city in America. Yes, you you're a very good point. Very good, good point, point, Kevin. Uh, we we. Um, uh, We've had, uh, let's see, we're getting, we're, people are starting to kill people here in New York again. I, I, it, it, what I like about it is we're getting back to our old selves, <laughs> you know? Yep. Uh, <laughs> all over the place. I thought COVID had kind of stifled all that kind of stuff, you know? People were afraid to go out. Yeah, uh, they just stocked up on more ammo. Yeah, so, uh, uh, well, I told Marjorie, you know, well, I've mentioned this before, that when the whole COVID thing was on, I said, you know, the minute this is over, the gun, the shooting is going to start. You know, that people will kind of have had being indoors for 
you know, a year or whatever, and they're going to go crazy. They're just going to go nuts. Mm -hmm. So I hope you never get over COVID in Australia, okay? We have gun control. They have, gun, have control. gun control. Explain, explain your gun control, because uh, 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 Alan here, of course, is a bit is a gun advocate. He believes in it, but so he's... technically speaking, Australia does have guns. We still have guns. We are a rural farming, agricultural based okay. country. Yeah, we still have, we still have hunting. We still have guns, um, but they're regulated, and they have to be properly secured, and they have to be properly checked, and they have to be properly registered, and it is. And what they did, basically after the, in 1991, there was the Port Arthur Massacre, which is the most deadliest uh, you know, mass shooting in Australia had up until that point. Yeah. After that point, they basically said, there is no reason for an average civilian to have military grade weapons. So we still have rifles, we still have shotguns, we mm -hmm. still have pistols, but we don't have semi-automatic or fully automatic weapons. Mm -hmm in the hands of local people and so, if you want to have any of those other types of guns like shotguns handguns rifles and whatever you do have to register them right and there's you a have process. to be a part of a registered body so mm -hmm. you have to join like a shooting club or a hunting club or mm -hmm. a or a re registered body you mm -hmm. have to get insurance on the weapon oh, you have to be trained okay. on how to use it mm -hmm. you have to be go, go through like psychological mental pro uh, um Processing to make sure that you know that you're not going to do something stupid. Um, that's not to say we don't have illegal firearms in the country. We do because we have borders and we have ports. Illegal guns come in all the time. Um, we also have outlawed bike, motorcycle gangs. We have gun. We have gun crime. Well, I saw those motorcycle gangs in Mad Max, so I know they exist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we. But the difference is that our gun crime is very insular. It's very gun gun gang on gang. It's not person going into school or person going into shopping center or person got you no know, disgruntled worker well, going well, back well, in place well, but you did have that massacre that happened and that was unusual for you guys you didn't have those kind was, yeah, of, the, you didn't have those kind of mass shootings up to that point did you we had about 30 in the preceding 15 years mm -hmm. but now that's the case the mass shooting is more than five people how yeah, many got, how many got killed in that massacre it was like 29 yeah yeah so it was, it was at a it was at a historical. Uh, so Port Arthur well, is a penal is a convict settlement, historical landmark. Mm -hmm. So people go and visit. It's like visiting battlefields in right. you know colonial United States. Right. Uh, people go to experience their history. Um, guy came in with his you know his semi-automatic rifle, shot up the place. And then basically the prime minister prime minister at the time organized a gun buyback, which basically said we will buy. For any gun that we no longer deem you, like you to have, we'll buy it off you, no questions asked. And every five or ten years, we do another buyback amnesty, where it's like, hey, if you found your, you know, your grandfather's 303 that's been sitting in the shed for, you know, for 60 years, we'll buy that off you. We don't care. The, the last time we had one, an uh, anti-tank rifle was turned it was turned in. Oh Jesus! O old mate from the First World War brought it home, and it sat in the back shed, and he's like. Uh, what do I do? That? You know, the relatives are like, "Oh, what do we do with this?" The police are like, "You know, okay, we'll take it." Yeah, yeah, yeah fair. But game. that's how we regulate our guns. Like, we don't say, "Oh, you know, you, you know, you can't have guns." People like to say Australia doesn't have guns. Do, uh, Alan, uh, Alan you know, do you do you have any uh, 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 problem with the way they're doing it in Australia? Oh, a lot of it is like California, except for we don't require a um, a mental thing, but. Uh, they're, they're California laws, New York laws, New York City laws are a lot like that too. Kathleen, you raised your hand. I have had a concealed carry for 26 years. So when I was with you, Alex, I had a concealed carry, but I never talked about it. But never did I conceal carry with you. Oh, okay. I, well, I know something... that never happened because uh, I, I know that I, if I can get personal here, I undressed you on several occasions, and you never seem to have any weapons on you. <laughs> no, I mean, never. I mean, it's, you know, if you're a true concealed carry, you don't talk about it. You don't brag about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you why, why, to... why did you Why did you decide to be a concealed carry? Because I had a federal, you know, I have federal training. 
Okay, but I mean, but why did you? Oh, so you got it because uh, you had for your job. You had I to have it. I for UPS. I did a lot of work with mm -hmm. the DEA, the FBI, the CIA, the DEA. I mean, I did work with the ATF. God, all the people that were trying to get me. Were you? Were you spying on me? No, <laughs> but do you think anyone would have gotten to you? Do you think? I mean. Oh, I felt very safe around you. Yeah. You, know, you know, she had she had assault with a deadly weapon. Her breasts. <laughs> I mean, in my younger years, Those big old breasts. Know. Yeah, I think yours are bigger than hers. I think so too. <laughs> I'm jealous, like, Al. Okay. <laughs> but at the end of your, your argument, we have guns. The guy next door, the house right over here, he goes pig hunting. Um, I've I've seen it. He has an in, uh, in, in secure, securely secured in his property. A gun safe. It is a twelve gun gun safe. Wow. And he is you know, and he and the police do spot checks every, you know, indeterminate period. And he has to produce, you know, only X number of people can you access the safe. Yep. He has to present each rifle, each ammunition has to be stored separately. And it has to be like, Do you have the paperwork for this weapon? Yes or no? Where is it? I wanna see it. And the police can stop him at any time and be like, I wanna see your paperwork, I wanna see your guns. Absolutely. I believe and, that in England, and, and I, 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 money stops I, all that. I believe if I'm not wrong, in uh, in England, they have very tough gun laws. And one of the things is, if you want to have a gun for hunting, you have to belong, as you say in Australia, a club. And then you had to keep the gun at the club. You couldn't mm. keep it at home. And so you would go to the club to go out hunting, and you would uh, take out your gun from the wherever they, they put them. And uh, you would go do your hunting, and then when you were through, you would give it back, and they would take care of it for you. Uh, is that kind That's of- That's what like happens in Sydney. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, when I lived in Sydney, um, because you know the, you, you had to be a part of a pistol club or a rifle club, mm -hmm. you couldn't keep your weapon at home, you had to store it at the actual club. Uh, but I'm in rural you know, farmland yeah. now. There's farms all around me, so it's very much here. Like You need to, ha you need to have a- uh, What's the equivalent? A uh, 380 pound safe that's securely mounted to three anchor points in your property to be able to actually store any weapons on your premises. Okay. What they're, they're saying is two meth addicts can come in and steal that 360 pound safe. <laughs> it's right, it doesn't have a meth problem. So, yeah. Well, or, or so, meth, something meth, like meth that. Meth makes you. Me a 300 pound safe or 400 pound safe is not hard to carry out. Of Meth house. makes you strong, but like it, it, it does have to be secured to the premises. So it has to be like, the like bolted anchor, down, bolted into the, into a concrete slab or secured to the wall or something. Right. So it, 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 it can't be a transportable safe. I understand. Now look at Ray Renati, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. He's working out. Don't you all feel that he's doing it for us? <laughs> no. You know, I'm uh, not doing uh, it for you. I just. Did not have time today, and I wanted to show. Yeah, well, oh. here, here's my question: Is it? Did you buy yourself that bike? I know he this stole bike it for like 25 years. It's on a machine. It's he an outdoor it bike. It's an trainer. Scale. Oh, it's a regular bike. Yeah. I see, and then it's, it's on a little portable trainer thing. How, oh, how many SNH green stamps did it take to get it? <laughs> Yeah, I see. I mean, it I just know. doesn't right go anywhere. I know the U.S. is having some power issues, but I didn't know you had to pedal power your own power at the moment. Don't you miss going to the blue chip, the blue chip stamp store, the green I chip do. stamp? I do. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. Did that as a kid. Uh, me too. Oh well. Yeah. Well, no I'm, uh, I. I, I like Ray's hat. It's cute. I don't think you the had green. any of those uh, green stamps or anything like that in Australia, did you? No, we've never had. Well, savings. We kind of did. We kind of did. Like, um, oh, hearing what you, you, you and Larry talking about earlier, we we had the kid promotion things, uh, you know. Uh, but ours a school usually like related to schools. Yeah. So like, you know, you, oh, you get okay. a stamp, and then your school will get money to buy school supplies. Oh, I, and I think like I think we had something like that here, if I remember correctly. We still have it. My kids had it. it was called eScript. Yeah. Yes. And there was another one called uh, School Pop. There were two of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now it's just called a, in a uh, earn, you know, school year, school oh, earned. Alex, did you know what S and H stood for? 
Yes, uh, uh, we uh, 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 earlier. Uh, although the audience would not have heard. Uh, <laughs> Barry and Hutchinson. I heard it. Barry and Hutchinson, yeah. Right. Yeah. They were SNH <laughs> green stamps, and by the time you put in the last stamp so you could get maybe a, a, a wad of bubble gum or something, you were so parched from licking stamps because you had to, like, get thousands of stamps before you could get anything. But that's the way that's all torture. stamps were made at that time. Yeah. Not if you were um, my dad's gas station owner. We got them by the rolls. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, we had rolls of them like this. Yeah. And my mom would take me, have my dad bring them home from the gas station. Yeah. And we'd have a sponge and just lay them out and roll them on the sponge and put them in the book. <laughs> page at a time. This is why I can never win. Go, 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 go get me a fucking blender. Go get me a blender. Go get me this. <laughs> <laughs> This oh, is yeah. why I could never win any of those competitions that the fast food restaurants have. My family um, never did it. They they just thought it was stupid. We had the blue chip and the green stamps because we had to give them away at the gas station when they had, you know, you got 15 bucks worth of gas. You go over to the thing and dial the one five zero zero, And if you didn't give that old lady the green stamps, she let you know you didn't yeah. get the green stamps. Oh, they gave you all my stamps. But nowadays, yeah, 15 to... bucks worth of gas is like two gallons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. No, I, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Some, Hold on a second. When, I, when I was a point. kid, when I was a kid, I swear to you, I saw gas. <clears throat> when they used to have things called gas wars. You remember those, Jeff? Yeah. Gas wars. I was involved in all of them. Well, the, you're, yeah, you're, 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 you're younger than me, so probably you saw the price go down to like a dollar. Okay. We used oh. to, yeah, we used to have them because of the gas station down the block, and my dad would I, say, "I swear to you, or the I, price." I'm old enough that I remember when gas was twenty nine cents a gallon, and when they held the price wars, I saw it go down as low as nine cents a gallon. We used to it go fill the mini bike up the street two bucks? of the Chevron for twenty two yeah. cents. When, when, I was, when I was a little kid, there was a gas station near our house, and I specifically remember this. It was like twenty four cents a gallon. Well, you know, this like in the early 70s, tell you something that happened before I was born, actually, is that about gasoline. I thought you were talking about methane. The standard oil. You have to eat beans and everything. Can I tell my story? That. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. All I need is Tony here now to tell me to go fuck myself. That's Tony's other half. Anyway. I wasn't on last night because that thing with Tony just so put me off. I just I didn't, I, I didn't even want to do a show last night. But anyway, so uh, uh, no, what happened was years ago before I was born, uh, you had Standard Oil in New Jersey, and they wanted to take over everything. Oops, I just lost yep. the page. That's what my dad wanted. Uh, yeah, they wanted years. they wanted to take over everything, and so what they did was they would find a guy who uh, had a great gas station on a corner doing terrific business, okay? Because he was the only thing in the neighborhood. And what they would do is on the other corner, they would put up what was called a, uh, uh, what dog? Uh, 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 oh boy. It, it, Watch out. No, it had, it had a name and it was called a something dog um, uh, 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 gas. I'm trying to remember the name of it now. Jeez, my, my mind. Dog just, gas? No, it what? was it. No, it, it had something. It was something. Dog gas. Okay, oh, and yeah. and and what would happen is they would open up that gas station and they would just because they were Standard Oil in New Jersey and they could afford it, they just brought the prices down to nothing, and they put the guy on the other corner out of business. Out of business. And the minute he went oh. out of business, the uh, dog station. Okay, they did away with and just put up a, a Chevron station or Standard Oil, New Jersey. I think at that time yep. was what it was. Um, that's that's how they put guys out of business. What was that called? Something dog. Uh, yeah, I, know, I can't remember either, but they did it a couple of times in the San Francisco too. Oh, really? My dad was involved. He re he owned four stations between the Great Highway up 19th Avenue and then ended up down in the San Mateo area. Yeah. 
But this is how they, they this is all how standard they, oil. If anybody can look it up, I, I if, in fact it was a term later on when I was growing up that was used to mean something that was built to put somebody else out of business. Yeah, uh, I can't remember what they called it. It was a something. Now they call dog. that Donald Trump. Hmm? Mafia. Right. Yeah. Mob. Yeah. By the Mob. way, did you see the old uh, Donald's company is probably going to get uh, charged by the Yay. state of New York, indicted by the state of New York for? Yay. But I don't know Boo-hoo. what they all they can do is uh, go after the company, right? They can't. Am I right, t- uh, Josh? It can only go after the company. They're not going after Trump or any individuals in particular. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. I'm not. I don't know what they. I didn't hear anything about that today. So, I mean, well, I love watching MSNBC because over there they're like jerk, jerking off like crazy every time they find out that Trump might be his company might be indicted for something, and they're all rubbing their hands together and going, "Wow, you know, this is okay. terrific." We call that Noticias de Puñeteros. Uh, news of masturbators. <laughs> yeah, <Thank> okay. You. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Former <laughs> <laughs> Colossus in the Boy. chat room says it was called Yellow Dog he, Gas. Yellow Dog, that was it. That's, that's you you can get information from the chat. Come oh, on, man. Oh, oh, I had to look over here. Oh, yeah, Yellow Dog Gas, Alex, says Former yep. Colossus. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I remember uh, when I remember in Australia when when uh, gas became a dollar a liter and everyone lost their collective minds. Now mind you, a liter is three gallons. Well, one liter is three gallons. It's three quarts. Damn. No, it's three. It it three quarts. It takes three liters to make a gallon. Yeah. Yeah. Other answer. Yeah. Yeah. Three, so quarts. three quarts. So so Australia's low. They lost their collective minds when dollar, when right. fuel went over a dollar. That was right. A wow. liter's more yeah. than a quart. It's yeah, but the term the term yellow dog, uh, I first heard when somebody just referred to it as they're doing a yellow dog on you or something like that. It became an actual term for trying to put somebody else out of business by lowering your prices. I never heard that morning. term before. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And, and uh, you know, it's, uh, those were the days when Standard Oil of New Jersey were just the biggest assholes in America. Oh, they didn't go away. Believe me, they ran my dad out of business. Really? Wow. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Out in the West Coast, they were Chevron, right? And they were also Standard Oil. Oh, they were Standard Oil, Oil as well. They were Standard Oil as well. Yeah. But yeah. I think Standard they were out Oil Richmond. owned them. Yeah. Out in Richmond. Yes, Ross. Apparently, the phrase originated in politics. It's from the Southern United States. Yellow, yellow dogging someone. It's someone who would vote for a candidate who represented the de- Democrats instead of the Republicans, because you would vote for a yellow dog before they would vote for any Republican. Well, you see, I mean, that's probably the ye- <laughs> yellow dog evolved from the story that I told you, but it could yeah. refer to somebody who's running for office, say, as a Democrat, but he's really a Republican or something, to take votes away from other people, that kind of thing, you know. Yeah, basically, when, when, when uh, Herbert Hoover... Hmm? It started when 1928 presidential race, when Herbert Hoover... Uh, between the candidates, Al, Democrat candidate Al Smith and Republican candidate Herbert Hoover, then Senator J. Thomas Helen, who was a Democrat from Alabama, crossed and supported Hoover. Oh, okay. All right. Is it related to yellow journalism? Uh, no. No. But it would don't... be gasolina de amarillo, or as we would say, gasolina de tupa verga. <laughs> Thank you. By the way, we uh, we will have a, a translation of this program once we put this thing up online. <laughs> so funny, can't Thank you. Yeah. Dick I, feel sorry for the, I feel sorry for the guy who has to see if they do the monetary on the show. Listens to this every night. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I feel How sorry you, for that guy. <laughs> How you doing, Brian? How's the whole family doing? Everyone's doing good. Uh, my 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 pinch nerve is still oh, here. Yes. So. I, I should ask you about that. It takes a while to go away, Charlie. It that takes a Charlie. it takes a it takes Tracy a, called me Robert last year. Yeah, and you, I you and Charlie Charlie. look a lot alike. <laughs> yeah, and we get that all the time. Brothers from another mother. Oh, oh uh, it's doing. It's just you know I could put force on it and I could push something and hold something, but it's just when it's just lying here. It's like mm-hmm. tennis elbow all the way up to the neck. So I'm gonna do ice tonight and see how that works. Well, Ross, don't send us a chat because it shows up on the screen, and when well, it, yeah, sh- it when, when it shows up on the screen, 
uh, it looks that way on the air as well. Yeah. So. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> it's the first time you've done this. Uh, it's just, just, just a lot of pain. That's all. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. I, by the way, since Kathleen is here, I have often talked about the time I got, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 herpes. Herpes. Not herpes, but... Uh, Foot and mouth, foot and mouth, hoof and mouth. No, 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 no. You know, I paused for a moment because I can't remember what the disease was for a second. And you've got me having gonorrhea, syphilis, uh, beri beri, and, uh, and Dutch elm blight disease. Uh, no. You don't hate on Alex. Yeah, no. On. The, no. What was it? Uh, it, was, it was when I got the thing uh, with my eye. Uh, Pink eye. Pink eye. Pink eye. Pink no. eye. When I got Pimples. Right. Pimples. The thing no. that sounds like you should get it in your ass. Shingles. 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 Now, you have me, now you have me trying to figure out what it was, but I knew what it was. Well, I said it five times. Hemorrhoids. No, Hemorrhoids. You, you, no, you weren't with me when I got the shingles. Hemorrhoids. That was a friend of mine named Dolores who took me to the doctor. That's a negative. It wasn't me. It wasn't you. You were muy yeah. limpia when we were together. The very where where did all of a sudden you start <laughs> using Spanish as a second language? Alex? Oh, 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 Charlene Martinez has joined good. us, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Charlene. Alex? Yeah? I called in because um, you know that my husband is Mexican, right? Mm -hmm. She's swearing up a storm there, Kathleen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there I got some you backup. You're not there getting monetized tonight. That's for sure. Erica is very nasty. You know, if Erica he's, is if, like a penis. Uh, what's nasty about that? Well, not. What's nasty about that? We say it every night. <laughs> Here's yeah, an interesting. Everybody's got to have a penis. I understand all of no, but Spanish. This is in, this is interesting, and I got to figure this one out. And we'll find out after the show. But if we say really dirty words on the show a lot, they then demonetize the show. No. All right. Okay, I I'm want, gonna be a. Total Christian. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But I wonder if it's in Spanish that they have a machine that reads that. Of course. <laughs> Why not? Alex. Yes. You know, a friend of mine today on Facebook said something about his three butts because his dogs, <laughs> it was his three dogs butt in a picture. And there's a new thing on Facebook. I said, yeah, I love your three butts. And a message came up and told me that I better watch it or... I'm going to get, like, you know, in trouble with Facebook <laughs> for the word but. Oh, muy mala. Las you know, palabras you know, mala. You remember that? You remember that? Hold on, 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 gang. There was a time on Facebook where you could say just about anything you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, yeah. I mean, you still can. But the problem yeah. is that you get called on it now. I guess. Well, you have Facebook down in uh, Australia, right? That's how we talk, Alex. No, 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 no. But here's here's what I'm saying is that some countries don't allow the allow it in. Like China, the, they yes. you can't get Facebook in China. I wonder why. What do you mean you wonder right, why? Right, Al. Because they're Be communists. Or is it? Or, no, 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 no. It's I think it's probably because they realize that they're not as stupid as we are. Okay. No, it's because they're communist China. Right. Yeah. I just said that, and Australia is not. That's how they have it. You know something? Correct, I though. thoroughly enjoyed myself in China. I mean, I you know, I mean, I, I when in Rome, you know, do as the Romans uh, do. You blink twice oh, thank if they're God keeping you at gunpoint. What? What did you say? Yeah. Blink twice if they're keeping you hostage. Yeah. Well, no, I'm yeah, not. Exactly. I, I, well, look at the cap. This is my uh, Chinese army. Uh, cap. Uh, uh, no, I uh, I'm not a Uyghur, so I'm okay. You know? Yeah, for now. Uh, but uh, no, but I mean, you know, when it was when in Rome do as the Romans do. I knew where I was. I knew how the country was run, but I, I enjoyed the country. It was a beautiful, wonderful country, and the people are terrific. They're just the terrific. people are. It's the government that is not. Well, the government government's been there a long time doing this, so you know it's it. I don't care. It's the brand. If like you them. if you want to leave China, you can leave. Nobody's keeping you there. Yeah. You know. yeah but anyway, yes, uh, Alan. I just want to mention to Brian. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me. I want to mention to Brian that I had a pinched nerve once and I had acupuncture and it worked really good. 
You know yes. something? I think I've heard, I've heard that. I think acupuncture is voodoo science. <laughs> yeah, it's been around for 5,000 years. It works. No, no I, I don't care. You say it's been around for 5,000 years. Uh, there was a guy by the name of Harrison Salisbury who uh, wrote a book about China. Uh, when he was in China, he went to China to do some reporting and stuff. And he had something go wrong on him, and he had to have an operation. And so they uh, wanted to deaden the area they had to operate on, and they gave him acupuncture, and it didn't work. And they said, well, the reason it doesn't work is you're from the West, and you don't believe in it. <laughs> it, there, it, it really, there's a belief that the reason it works on some people is because they believe enough in it that they actually believe they're numbing themselves. Like hypnosis. Well, was he in China or was he in China? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to get aspirin. The, prob up. the problem is, since you said that, I'm going to be demonetized. <laughs> uh, I, I, I had, I had um, I pinched a nerve in my neck and I had acupuncture. It didn't do anything except make me nauseous. Mm. Just mm. FYI. So at least it works. <laughs> No, well, I'll, yeah, tell you, I'll tell you the one that. That, the one that gets <laughs> the one that gets me is Marjorie's always says you know your back's hurting you should go to my chiropractor because she goes to a chiropractor all the time she's been going to a chiropractor for forty years I mean this guy has probably bought a yacht on all the hundred and twenty five dollar yep. appointments he's done with her. And, wow! Where's and so I'm she, in the wrong so I, I said, you know, and I, I got this neuropathy, and my feet were numb. And he says, you should really go to your, go to my uh, chiropractor. So I go to the chiropractor, and he says, well, I need a, an X-ray of that part of your back, and uh, not, uh, and and I said, well, I already have one because I got one at my neuro <laughs> neurologist. So I gave him that, and so I had an appointment with him, and I'm telling you. Nothing fucking happened. I didn't even, you know, I if I if I go to a doctor and I'm not well, I've got an infection. He gives me an antibiotic. I take the antibiotic. It goes away. Uh, I I didn't expect miracles in one visit, but I expected something. For 120 nothing. bucks, you could have gone and got the uh, tennis channel instead. Exactly. I'm moving to Texas, and I'm going to get with Charlie, and we're going to be Ebony and Ivory <laughs> chiropractors, and we're going to make some Skrilla. This is Charlie's life. I've been in chiropractors for, for my whole life, and it worked. My dad was a divorce county. I think, you know why? I think it's the same reason as with the uh, It is not psychosomatic, I, think, I was skeptical. I think it's the same yep. as, as, uh, as, uh, as, what do you call it, as uh, acupuncture. Uh, acupuncture, that if you believe in it, it works. I just, uh, you know, first of all, He's telling me, and now go home and you have this to do and that to do and do this exercise and do that exercise. And I'm going, I didn't come here because I want to exercise. I came here because <laughs> I don't want to exercise. Right. Okay. I want you to do something to me, like hit me in the back and all of a sudden it feels better, you know? And, uh, but I'm not coming to you to have you tell me that, well, uh, uh, I did a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Now go home and do this homework. Like, do five hours of this, you know? Hey, Charlie and I will take care of it, Alex. Yeah. Trust yeah. us. Your new husband, Kathleen. You know, you know something? <laughs> you have a Peter. new husband. No. Yeah, Peter. But don't you know don't about, tell don't Tony you know about Kathleen? Don't tell Tony. He'll be upset. <laughs> don't you know about Kathleen? She's marrying people everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, but hey, when she's done with when she gets with Charlie, remember you go black. You never go. You won't come back. At least the last one. <laughs> but if you have problems going back, your back can be taken care of by a chiropractor. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. That could be a slogan. Alex. Yes, uh, Charlene. You know, I think Marjorie, you never had the back shots because I had one. Oh, she gets these. She gets these and shots. And they don't and do anything, oh. I guess, because I don't believe in it, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> she she gets these things, and they do help. I mean, she has has these because she believes in it. No, because yeah. it actually numbs it. I, yeah. I is it an it's... epidural or is, or is it uh, cortisone? I don't know what they're putting in her back. 
Yeah, I don't. It's a steroid they put it's in your back. It's a steroid, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think. It's I've had that shot. Uh, Brian, also, don't do that. I did that shot for the pinched nerve and made it worse. Just FYI. You know, Brian, I That's was doing a to doctor and stopped worse. listening to Ray. <laughs> what a bunch yeah. of what? You see this, Ross? How old? Sorry, are, sorry, wait, hold on a second. Up. I'm sorry. Hold on a second, Ross. How old are you now? Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Isn't it wonderful hearing a bunch of old farts complain <laughs> about their health? <laughs> I know, and I was healthy until I joined the show. Yeah, really. <laughs> right. See, it's, it's all awesome. having all kinds of problems. Then it's waiting room. <laughs> you know, I, I um, uh, this week I went to my my uh, urologist and he did a blood test to see how my uh, uh, what he called was doing. My uh, prostate. Uh, PSA. It, my no, how, how my uh, how my PSA was okay. And it came back uh, that uh, it's almost non undetectable, all right? Great. Which is great news, terrific news. Been about a year and a half since I had the uh, prostate uh, surgery and stuff like that. Not the removal of the prostate, but you know the, the seeds and the radiation and so on. So that's good news, right? So what do I do? I start worrying about other things. Like, does this look oh, infected to you? Oh my god! <laughs> I both. I, I get the same way, Alex. I wonder if Madame Taco Bell is going to be open. Well, no. Well, I what happens with me is, I worry about. I I wake up every morning saying, "What is it that's going to get me?" You know, obviously it's not going to be the prostate, at least for the time being, right? What is it? My heart's fine. I go my. I have a doctor. Uh, my uh, my uh, uh, general practitioner is also a, a heart guy. And he gives me all the heart tests and everything else, and that's just fine, you know, that's terrific. I just, I wake up in the morning and go, what's gonna get me, you know? Hey, remember when I used to read you your horoscope? It was, me, 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 my career, do you think it's cancer? <laughs> me, 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 my career, me, 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 cancer, my <laughs> career. <laughs> you must have enjoyed it, you stuck around. <laughs> well, because I loved you, Bennett Gordon Schwarzman. <laughs> Gordon? Oh. Not to change oh, topics, but does anyone, so. can I, do you guys know about the update on the the Miami high-rise thing? Cause oh, yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm obviously, oh, I, I only heard terrible. about it, but that's all I've heard. Have they found more people? people? Well. Still buried, and probably at this point, Almost 24 hours later, nobody will be out out no, alive. No, they said 72, 72 hours. Yes. Oh, 72. Yeah. Well, it yeah. happened yesterday morning. So yeah. God, it's like 9/11. Well, it's yeah, terrible. It's 9 There's, it's terrible, and I feel bad for anybody who was there. But on the other hand, I, I go through this thing that goes, well, they were in Florida, <laughs> you know. So uh, I don't care. I mean, my dad is a structural engineer. I mean, he built bridges and buildings. And when he heard about it, he said, Florida, well, Florida's sinking, so think about it. And I said, no, Dad, you're absolutely right. I mean, it was built on reclaimed wetlands. Yeah. It's 100 oh, feet from the beach. It used to be called swamplands. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Union City in California. If there's an earthquake, it turns to jello. It's worse than Union City because it's 100 feet from the ocean, from, from the Atlantic Ocean where this building was. It's so well, sad. It, well, it I think sad. also they, they, the problem is it's Florida. It's Florida. Yeah, it's you know? sinking. No, but problem I mean, is, no, but it's, it's also. Well, it's a swamp. It's no, but it's not so much that it's a swamp. But that if you're going to build in a swamp, then you better have local ordinances that yeah. prevent you from uh, from not building it safely. I'm Absolutely. sure you can build in a swamp. It's possible, okay? Yep. But you've got to take extra precautions, and I think mm -hmm. they didn't take extra precautions. So what about the no. tower down, downtown San Francisco that's already dropped seven inches? In the it? Millennium I thought, Towers. I thought it was like leaning. It's leaning. Yeah, it, it is. is. Yeah. You're both right. Yeah. It's leaning yeah. and sinking. Yeah. And it's on it's on Phil. Yes. Yeah, well, I think I think though it'll be pretty good because as it goes down and down and down, people can adapt to it by moving their furniture to the wall. 
no, yeah. no, no. The first floor becomes the second floor. Yeah. <laughs> um, Josh doesn't have any of these problems where he is. Mm. Which problems? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. Tall buildings? No. We're talking about the building in Florida that, you know. Most of the people, if they haven't been found alive, I mean, well, I mean it was horrible. Right it was just horrible what happened there. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, and, but I go, it's Florida. Where else would it happen? Yeah, New York City, somewhere no, around. No, I'll uh, tell you, New York City. No, the building codes are more strict. Right yeah. now, right yeah. now, right. I'm having to suffer through months and months and months and pointing. months and months and months of pointing in my building to make sure. That all the mortar is in there, Working. and that uh, that uh, that the, the the bricks haven't won't fall out, and so on. They're replacing bricks that are loose. They have to do this by law every what thirty years, something like that. Mm. Uh, uh, Shecky had to do it at his home. Okay, if you have a house that's made of bricks, uh, the three little pigs would have to go <laughs> out and get somebody to point. You know. Um, but uh, New York is like very, very big on that. You don't hear about buildings falling down in New York City. No. Uh, but well, to be honest, airplane. we did, and we not had the end of it. What was it? you had that problem? No, we did hear about buildings falling down in New York City, and we have not stopped hearing about it. Re oh, 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 oh! You mean the well when yeah. when you fly wait a minute, right? when you fly planes yeah. into them. They don't have a tendency to be able to take care of that kind of impact. Yeah. Okay. Uh -uh. You know. Right. I mean, that, uh, uh, but yeah, it's, it's it, yeah, like I'm all I got was like a news headline saying, "Oh yeah, this building collapsed," and that's all I've gotten feedback in a background. I was like, "We don't yeah. even cover American shootings anymore." Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> there's too many of them. Yeah. We wouldn't have any yeah, news we for Australia. Well, you know, if we stop covering them here, they might happen less. Right. I, I right. just think that a guy goes berserko and then he thinks, well, I saw it on the news. Some guy went That's in right. and shot up a mall. I think gives I'll people do that. ideas. Huh? Yeah. Gives them ideas. Yeah. yeah. Gives them ideas. Yeah, now that we don't have Trump to pick on anymore. <laughs> yeah, I guess we don't. I, I think. By the way, you know, I saw on, uh, if you get a chance, go on Facebook. Uh, on uh, YouTube, uh, Jimmy Kimmel uh, had what's his name on the lawyer uh, uh, Giuliani. No, Cohen, 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 and man, he was funny. Mm -hmm. Cohen's yeah. hilarious. Huh? He's hilarious. <clears throat> he Cohen. really is. He's yeah. very, very funny. Uh, and uh, you know, you know he's got to have a sense of humor working with Trump, I guess. He said, do you think, he said, uh, I think Kimmel said that uh, uh, Giuliani said he wasn't worried about uh, the actions that the city has taken against him or the state has taken against him by doing away with his license for his law firm and for him. And he said, of course he's not worried about it. He's got enough problems worrying about winding up in jail, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and that's he, a good line. The, it, no, he he talked about. You know, it. He is, said, "Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen uh, uh, Trump do anything really ridiculous?" And he said, "Well, I saw him come out of a shower once with wet hair." Ew. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> 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 I, I would, yeah, I, I started to vomit at that. Yeah. Um, oh god. But uh, so, uh, is, is work going good, Brian? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, we're doing some live live uh, sessions with China right now, showing them how to do the stuff because we can't travel. So, yeah, yeah, well, no, sort of crazy. And if you if you did travel there, yeah, you could get in, but then you would have to have their vaccination, and you would have to wait in a hotel for two weeks before you get out and do anything. By that time, it's time to go home. Yeah, I think one of the other things is since there'll be some delays, that everything's happening all at once. So all of our factories are starting to get hired and, and all this stuff all at one time. So we have three factories in the Bay Area and then Sunnyvale still expanding. So, yeah, it's we're, you, you we're, know, asking, we're looking for like 40 engineers right now just to put the machines together. What's so. funny in China, uh, and it, it's really silly, I guess, uh, is that if you've been vaccinated, you know, and you've had the two vaccines and all of that. You've been vaccinated. You still have to be vaccinated by them. 
They don't trust the American vaccinations. You blame them? Are they still doing the mandatory rectal thermometer? The what? That was the thing. That, yeah, oh, yeah that's, that's right. That's right. Australia's in the trade war with China. So they're only doing it to us. Are all diplomats and, uh, and uh, business, consul officials going to China have to have their temperature taken rectally? That's yep. right, mother. Really? The, those yeah. little wow. handgun things aren't good enough for them? Apparently not when you're in the middle of a trade <laughs> war with China. Oh, I they, see. They, do the, they do the handheld thing, but you just got to bend over and pull your pants down. <laughs> China. Oh, they, ha they haven't met my urologist, have they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, with short fingers. Yeah. 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 The thing is, they're trying to do like the gun one, but they're going the wrong way to do it. Yes. Yes. I I haven't used my gun in uh, gee a couple of weeks. I should test myself right now. There you go. Oh, there it goes. Ten minutes. Yeah. yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we only have two more minutes of the show. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no. can I can I do a bad hey, joke or something here, Alex, real fast? Wait, I'm, I'm oh, going oh, to I'm oh. going to France on Monday for seven weeks, FYI. And, oh wow! Um, I'll be uh, it'll be five in the morning. I'm usually up because I can't sleep, so I'll try to call in. Try to know. call, really? Do try are to you, call. Are you acting? No, no, no. My son's going to be working up in the Alps with his with his cousin. How nice! How nice! The goats. Yeah. Alex. That's really nice. Alex, yeah. What? If um, Curtis Lee were to be uh, gov um, mayor of New York, he'd be the first one to wear a beret or something, right? Yeah. You think he'll oh. lose the beret? <laughs> I have no I idea. I think it's a joke. <laughs> I have no idea. He's not going to win. I don't even know. I know he's, he's not. Gonna, I don't know it's if he's going to even get right? the nomination. But one, no. one of them's a retired fire captain or police captain or uh, yeah like yeah that? that's uh, that's the guy who looks like he's going to be mayor of new york oh which i'm not that happy about <clears throat> but he turned into a police state again like when giuliani was there yeah well i just don't uh, you know i just don't uh, i what the hell i i don't like him i don't think he's that good but anyway what happened to uh kathleen we lost her and uh -oh, we only she have like, like oh there she is okay we only she have a minute left sure. just want her boobies seen what? Do you want what? you to be demonetized? Why you obsessed with Kathleen's oh, breasts? What is this? <laughs> Me? Yeah, yeah you. Yeah, I don't you, know. I like women's you're breasts. You're always making jokes that? about her breasts. How do you breasts? know what they look like? Uh, because Alex early on was describing them in detail. No, I wasn't describing no, them No, no, no. Alex is very respectful of yeah. me. I'm very I know where you live. I'm very respectful of her boobs, damn it. Thank you. Yeah. You know. Uh, me too. What? <laughs> me too. You too. Yes, good. Good. Well, you know, it's getting to be almost time to Is it almost time to get out of here? Oh, yeah, it is. I just looked at my clock here. And what a week it's been. What do you mean? And how? You mean on that this? That was the week that was on this show. <laughs> oh, I heard well, lots of drama. Drama. Yeah. My husband told me everything. Yeah. Well, your husband. I watched Tuesday. Wow, that was something. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Tony telling me to go fuck myself. <laughs> no, that was my husband. That's yeah. one for me. How dare I my phone. Yeah. Anyway, hey, have to get a divorce. Anyway, Ray, hopefully we'll see, we'll hear from you when you when you go to France. Boy, yeah, yeah. I, I usually can't sleep early in the morning, so I'll just call in. Man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, okay. and and since you're going to be in the Alps, you'll learn to yodel, and you can yodel on the show. <laughs> yodel. Yeah. Uh, th and he ran thank you. bicycle. <laughs> thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Alan. Uh, thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, Josh. Uh, Josh been a little quiet tonight, but that's okay. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much for telling us all about gas stations in California. Kathleen, always a pleasure to have you here and hear you curse in Spanish. Buenas noches. Yeah. Uh, Ray Renati, <laughs> Buenas thank noches, you. Mija. Thank you, Brian. And yeah. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see you next week. And same thing with you, Char Charlene. Thank you all for being here. Why don't you all give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our uh, citizen panel for tonight and for this week. Uh, and they will be reassembling some of them 
on the program right after us, which is Jack Bishop and The Intersection. Uh, you can call him using Skype and uh, the call letter is GabNet Live. GabNet Live. Uh, see you again. Uh, when is it? Uh, to Monday we'll be here at 4 o'clock for the uh, pop-up show. And then the actual uh, show like this one, The Ramble, will be here on Tuesday. In the meantime, as always, uh, I'll see you then. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And if you haven't gotten the vaccine yet, get a needle in your arm. Call it macaroni. Anyway, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.